So for the I.O. cards, we have the West Term, the West Deck, and the Acrylic Display Cover. The West Term is where the terminations are on the terminal blocks, and that's where you would connect your uh, field um, sensors and field wiring. So all the wiring, which is basically generated from the configuration system using a wiring list, would be terminated in accordance with the wiring list requested. Um, the WASDAC is where the main um, parts are, the main components, power components are, and that's for a reason, it's because if you ever have to change, you would be able to change the WASDAC without rewiring uh, the WASTERM. Okay, and the, the display will allow you to easily look at the status through the LEDs and you would know what is the status of the card, whether it's running um, and whether any of the points has been forced or uh, required to be um, forced basically. Okay, and uh, on the West Term, there is a set of jumpers that where you would set your uh, address from uh, uh, from the configuration system so the configuration system will give you a unique address for every board because these boards are daisy chained and uh, and then you will be able to set up the address on these boards to allow you to uh, identify them uniquely in the in the field the type of boards that we have, uh, we have a D20A, which have 32 analog inputs, D20S, 64 digital inputs, a K, which has 32 digital outputs, and then a C0, which have 16 digital inputs, 8 digital outputs, uh, C1, which have 16 digital inputs, 8 digital outputs, 16 analog inputs, and a C2, which have 16 digital inputs, 8 digital outputs, 8 analog inputs, and 8 analog outputs. These are not the only peripherals that we have been used over the years. With the D20, uh, we have a modem, was a Bell modem, and a tele Telenetics modem uh, that's also compatible with our uh, with our devices. From a power supply, like we said, the three items were chassis, main board, power supply. Uh, the part numbers of the power supply for a D20, D200 is 580020, and you can use this table for a quick reference on uh, the, the power uh, capabilities of these power supplies. So there is a bank of eight jumpers that are used in order to set up the hardware on a D20S uh, board. And uh, in this case, we've got the jumper set up on the first jumper set up and the third jumper uh, set up, which gives you two to the power zero plus two to the power two, which is basically one plus four, and that's address five. But as you can see, you can binary set up the address of the uh, board which is based on the configuration from sgconfig. The peripheral consists of a West DAC D20S board and a Western D20S. The West DAC D20S has connectors in the back. These connectors are keyed so that a WestDAC D20S can fit only a Western D20S. A WestDAC D20S cannot fit a Western D20A or K. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the adapters on the D20S board. So we, we've got this bank of adapters. And uh, basically the way it works is this would uh, allow our S-board to be either 24 volt DC 
uh, on the terminations or uh, 48 volt DC or 125 volt DC. So depending on uh, what configuration you like, so you can either, if you want the 24 volt DC, uh, what you would need to do is for uh, 1 to 17, you would need to populate them with the 2450030 uh, RNET. And uh, for uh, the 18 to the 25, you would need to populate it with the 2450029 uh, resistor or RNET. And if you want the 48 volt DC, then you would just basically uh, populate all the banks with the 2450004 uh, RNET. Um, if you are looking at the 125 volt TC, uh, then you would need to uh, populate it with the 530-0133 resistor nets or 10K uh, value, and uh, that would. Uh, Put the right adapter so the adapters are based on your field configuration and termination that you connect to in the fields okay so the the p common which sits next to the cpu on a wasdac board basically is uh, the boot rom of the cpu and uh, the p common uh, would have a label on it just like this white label so in this case our white label is reading p010-0 version 306 P common 306 U10, and the U10 basically indicating that this is the U10 uh, part of the board in case you're looking at the module layout or the, the uh, layout of the board. And, and uh, this P common, if it is blank, if it doesn't have a sticker on it like this one, it means that it's empty. And you should basically get a, a one that's not empty for the D, D20. Uh, S board to work. Otherwise, if it's a blank and and you know no sticker, it means somehow it was ordered without any programmed uh, boot ROM or P common, or by mistake uh, an empty P common was placed in it. In either case, you should order a P common with a sticker that clearly identify the version number. This version number should be equivalent to the version number that's specified in your module layout uh, on your, on your uh, um, uh, module Mac file which is the uh, file that specify the firmware of your P common and boot ROM so that uh, your S board starts to communicate to the D20 main chassis. So for the D20S board We've got uh, two fuses here, and uh, basically the fuse is a uh, 250 volt, uh, one amp uh, rating. It's a time delay uh, fuse, which means it's a it's a slow blow uh, fuse. And uh, for this one, it's uh, it's basically a bus MDL one, but um, if if you need to replace it. Um, you've got the spec, which is 250 volts, 1 amp, slow blow. For a D20S, when it's up and running, what we will see is you will see the online constant, the run line blinking, and the transmit and receive blinking back and forth. And again, it has 64 digital inputs when one of the digital inputs changes state. Right, as we can see, all digital inputs are connected. So when they change state, we can see the LED changing. Okay, so we're going to give you an overview of the D20A. Uh, the D20A board, or the analog board, which can take 32 analog uh, inputs from the field DC analog connectors, can connect to the termination points. Now, the termination points, as you can see, can be either a, a Phoenix connector or it could be a DB25 connection. Either way, 
there is so many. These are the most common one, which is the Phoenix and the DB25. We've got a, a pin holding uh, uh, types. So different utilities have different way of uh, connecting the field termination to the field termination. And uh, when we look at the A board, there is a maintenance port here, uh, what we call a D.20 uh, port. Uh, or a promaint, sometimes it's referred to as promaint. So this serial port here is, is a promaint or a maintenance port. Um, those two serial ports which are connected to each other in order to allow for daisy chain of the um, peripherals. So you can connect to this one and or this one and then daisy chain from the other one that's not connected to a different peripheral. Uh, and you connect it back to the main chassis. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you the parts of the D20A board. The first part is the plexiglass covering, and that comes off. Okay, so this is the plexiglass uh, covering, and basically, as you can see, it has uh, annotations for uh, the on status, the run, the transmit, the receive, and it has... Uh, analog scanning sequence so when the d20a is up and running as you will see in a video is that um, it will show you the status of the a board running and it has uh, an indication that this is a d20 a board right the next part of the d20 a board is the west deck is the d20 west deck okay and the d20a west deck board basically contains uh, the power supply component of the D20A WESDAC board, a daughter board, and the, the, P -com, the P common or the boot ROM of the A board is under this daughter board. I'll show you how to uh, get to the A board. Uh, this is the main CPU of the A board, and it has to be initialized. We'll show you in a video how we initialize it in the factory. Uh, in case it needs to be initialized, uh, then then you will you will understand how to initialize the CPU, and then there is the LEDs which show you that the D20A is up and running and it's scanning the analogs constantly. So if it's in scanning mode, as you will see in the run mode, they will they will basically scan continuously. The last part that we will talk about is the Western board and the Western board has, as I said, the Promint serial port. It has the two D.20 link for daisy chaining uh, connections, and this will connect only to a D20 cable. The D20 cable is a straight through cable, which means that uh, all the pins, pins one to nine, will be connected to pins one to nine on a on a female uh, connector, and these connectors here uh, uh, basically is where the west DAC will connect to the west term. These are the uh, uh, adapters, uh, fuses, uh, jump memory, uh, sorry, address uh, jumper settings. And for a part number, as you can see in here, this is a D20A and the part number is 5170166 three so and uh, this is this will be the model of this board the five one seven zero one six three and the serial number which is the twenty five seven six six so that's the serial number of this board the revision is rev one twenty so if you want to locate the serial number of this board and I hope you have a good understanding of the D20 A board. So this bank of jumpers is the address jumper. And basically, the address jumper allow you to set up the address of the board. Every board that's connected to a main chassis, as you've seen in the previous videos, the D20, the D200, right? The different type of chassis, all of them will communicate to a peripheral via its own specific unique address that's in the configuration that can be set up in the configuration. So we set up the configuration uh, address of the peripheral. We also have to set up, set it up in hardware 
And to set it up in hardware, it's in here. Uh, you would have to set up these jumpers. Uh, in this case, the first two jumpers are in, which means that this is address three uh, assigned to, it's a binary address. Uh, so two to the power zero plus two to the power one, which will give you one plus two is address three. And that's how the addressing is assigned to a peripheral. Okay, so in previous video, we have shown you that there is a West deck and a West term. Now, the West deck is keyed, which means that an A West deck or a West deck A board can only fit on a West term A board. The reason for that is wherever the West deck connects at the back here, those three connectors, they go on the West term on these three connectors. Okay, and it's keyed such that if you've got an K West term or an S West term, a status board or a control board West term, you will not be able to connect an A uh, board West DAC. Okay, so as we said, the West term has uh, resistors on it, and uh, on on these resistors, uh, my friend uh, from customer service is going to explain it, which you can either request it via an RMA process or by an ordering process. Okay, and Yemeni, what types are these? Yeah, these are the uh, analog adopters actually. What you can see here is a, is a 5 kilo ohms uh, uh, analog adopter. And the same thing that uh, we have different types of analog adopters, we, we can use it. It depends on the configuration actually. So okay. you can select uh, if if you if you want to purchase that one from the from the online sales. Actually, you can you can select what type of adapter you can use. So we can it. have either uh, five. Uh, uh, yeah, either five or ten kilo ohms and uh, okay, or f or yeah. ten kilo ohms yeah. uh, resistors, resistors on the on the A board. On the A board, yes, correct. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to basically locate the P common or the boot ROM of the uh, A board. So in this case, I'm gonna you lift the daughter card from the West deck. Okay, so the, this daughter card comes out. Hidden under the daughter card is your P common. As you can see, uh, in this case, it's uh, SBA009 P common 3.05 uh, U10. And uh, this P common has to match your module.mac file as you've seen in previous videos for the firmware and the software. So the P common 3.05 U10 is the one that's requested for my system setup as such this is the P common in here. A common mistake is customers would send in the, the West DAC for repair and not mention what P common it should come back with. It will come back with a empty P common, so there will be no label on this P common, which means it's an empty P common. Obviously, when you start up the, D, the A board, the A board will not start up properly, it will not communicate to the main chassis, so you would need to verify that the right P common is in uh, place on the A board. So the D20A has uh, two fuses here, they're basically 250 volts, uh, one amp fuses, and they basically protect against, um, you know, bad power connection, uh, the wrong external, internal uh, wetting setting. So all of that is protected by these two fuses here um, that are on the main board. Okay, so this is a D20A board. And when the D20A board is running and you install the right boot ROM, you will have the scan, the analog scan going on, as you can see. And you will have the run, transmit and receive. So the transmit and receive lights will be blinking back and forth. And you will have a constant on LED 